So we're going to now move on to something called a payoff chart or payoff charts. We're going to draw a few of these and see what they look like. And there are payoff charts for both types of options and let's start with the call. So we'll draw a vertical axis and a horizontal axis. Uh, and on the vertical axis we will plot our profit and loss in dollars. So obviously we can have profit or we can have loss. And on the horizontal axis we plot the stock price. And I'll put a little P under S to signify stock price. So let's draw out a scenario here. Let's say that we want to buy a call. And you'll remember that when we're buying a call we are long. It is a long position. And let's say that the strike price is $50. Recall K represents strike price. The price of the stock at the time that we buy the option is $48. And we're going to pay a premium of $4 for the option. So what does that look like on, uh, on a chart? Well, let's first plot the strike price, $50. And let's uh, use some logic and figure out what happens at $50. Well, at $50, we paid $4 for the option, which means if the stock ends at $50 uh, and our strike is 50, we're not making any money. We lose $4 because we paid $4 for that option. If the stock ends at 49 or 48 or 47, we lose the full $4. Notice how it's a straight line. That means that our maximum loss on this trade will always just be $4. We can never lose more than $4, regardless of how low the price goes. Now, if the price of the stock starts rising, uh, the value of our option starts rising until we get to $54. At $54, we still continue to rise, but now we're making money. From 50 to 54, we're simply minimizing our loss we break even on the option at a price of the strike price, strike price plus the premium. In this case, the strike was 50, the premium was $4. Our break even point is $54 on this option. Above that, we start making money. Well, you may argue, but wait a minute, the stock price was $48. If I had bought the stock price, my chart would look like this. And I'd always be six dollars ahead of the option and that six dollars comes from uh, knowing that we paid uh, four dollars uh, for the uh, 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 for the premium plus the difference between the strike price and where the stock price was so the stock price was at 48 we had a, a strike of 50 if we bought the stock we made that extra two dollars plus the $4 premium. The problem is on the downside. Look at this. Uh, the stock price can keep dropping. Your maximum loss could be the full $48. We break even at 44. In other words, we're indifferent between the stock and the option at $44. At $44, we still have a $4 loss. But look at this, what I'm doing here. This is the risk that we want to avoid. That's the risk we want to avoid. To avoid that risk, we're willing to give up the upside, the extra upside by owning the stock itself to avoid that risk. We always have a maximum loss of four dollars. Let's move over to the put. Let me draw the uh, uh, the payoff chart uh, for the put, and we'll see that the put is pretty much the well, not pretty much. It is the mirror opposite of the call. So let's, uh, we've drawn out our, our chart. Let's get our scenario. We're going to buy a put. Now remember, since we are buying, we are long. Long does not refer to the call or the put. Long refers to the fact that we're buying something. So we can be long a call and long a put. When we're long a call, we profit when the stock price goes up. When we're long a put, we profit when the stock price goes down. And that's confusing for some people. They think, well, isn't that a short position? No, it's not. We'll see later. So let's continue with our scenario here. Uh, a strike price of $50. The stock price is at $52 right now. And we're going to pay $4 uh, 
uh, for this option. So again, using logic, let's draw our chart out. Let's draw our strike price of $50 and ask ourselves what happens at $50. Well, at $50, the option isn't worth anything because you wouldn't exercise at 50. As the stock price goes up, the put becomes worth less and less and less until the put is worth zero. So our maximum loss is $4. No matter how high the stock price goes, the most we can lose is $4. As the stock price starts dropping, uh, we start minimizing our loss until we break even. And we break even, much like we broke even on the call, we break even when, um, on this one we reverse it, we take our strike price minus our premium. In the call, remember it was our strike price plus our premium. Over here, it is now our strike price minus our premium, which is at $46. So when the stock gets to $46, our option will be worth what we paid. We profit after that. So as the stock price continues to drop, we profit. Now we can use the same logic again and say, but if I shorted the stock at $52, my payoff would look like this. Wouldn't I be $6 ahead under this scenario? $6 ahead, we get to that by the premium we paid, $4, plus the stock price minus the strike price. Notice it's the reverse. On the, other, on the call, it was the strike minus the stock price. Here, it's the stock price minus the strike. Yes, you would. But look what happens when a stock goes the wrong way. If you short a stock and it goes up, you continue to lose and lose and lose. There is the risk right there that we want to avoid. And to avoid that risk, we're willing to trade off that $6 extra profit to avoid losing on the upside. So it has a built-in stop, right? Right away we stop. Let's look at a little bit more terminology. Come back over to this call thing. Notice that I've drawn this bracket here from $50 higher. When the stock price is above $50 for a call, we say that the option is in the money, ITM. And on the other side, below 50, the call is OTM, out of the money. And at $50, the call is ATM, at the money. It is the opposite for a put. If we buy a put and the price goes up, the put is out of the money. If we buy a put and the price goes down, the put is in the money. And of course, at $50, we are at the money. So for the call and the put, the 50 strike represents an at the money uh, on both. But notice where the out of the money is on the call and the put. The out of the money is below the strike price on the call because we benefit when the price goes up. And the out of the money is above the strike price on the put because we benefit when the price goes down. Now this is important to know when a stock is in the money at the money or out of the money. We will always exercise a stock that's in the money regardless of where it is because it helps minimize our loss. Now, critical point here, a very critical point, and that's why it's in red. These payoff charts that I just drew here are what are called at expiration payoff charts. In other words, this is what your profit and loss will look like at expiration. It tells us nothing about what our profit and loss is from the time we buy it moving towards expiration. Only at expiration what our payoff will look like. And we're going to get into the non-linearity of these options uh, shortly. Uh, it's a little bit of a more advanced topic, but we'll talk about how, uh, how the curve, the payoff curve changes when certain things change. Now, somebody watching may say, but wait a minute here. Could I not achieve the same thing by buying 100 shares uh, uh, at uh, $48, let's say on the call, and just putting a stop in at 44? There, my maximum loss is $4. I'll, I'll pay $48 and my maximum loss is $4, just like the call, but I'll always grab that extra $6 of upside. And that seems to be the question that's thrown out a lot when we get to this call is like, but I can get the same thing by buying the underlying. Why would I ever buy the option and give up the six bucks when I can get the same thing with a stop loss? Well, think about how we, uh, how we have to uh, do this second order. 
if you're buying 100 shares of the stock, what are you going to pay? You're going to pay $4,800. If you have a margin account, you'll pay $2,400 and interest on the other $2,400 loan. But when you buy the, the option, what's your cost on the option? $400. So it allows you to benefit on the upside for one twelfth of the cost, 400 versus 4,800. The other important thing to keep in mind is, let's say the stock price does move from $48 to $44. You're out. You're out and, you ha and you've achieved your maximum loss of $400. However, the option itself has not lost $4. That $4 loss on the stock might translate to only a $2 loss on the option, so that the option still has $200 worth of value, so that you can still realize $200 of salvage value by getting out. Now, the important thing to keep in mind here is what if the stock falls to $43.50 and then rallies after that? If you bought the stock, you were knocked out because you can't stay in. You can't stay in and suffer those losses, but when you bought the option, you've committed to a maximum loss. So that spikes in the, in the price of the stock don't knock you out of the market. The option allows you to psychologically stay in longer than you normally would.